15th ranked Duke returns home on this Friday evening. Winners of 15 of their last 16 games as the Blue Devils welcome Louisville to open up ACC conference play for the Cardinals. It's ACC softball on ACC Network Extra. Hi, everybody. John Gross alongside former Blue Devil Jillian Ferraro. And hey, it's still early on in conference play. This is a good opportunity for both teams to set the tone for the rest of the season. Yeah, this is Louisville's first ACC series. So for them, it doesn't matter what happened in preseason. This is the start to their true season. For them, some quality wins picking up early is going to be key because the ACC is fierce this year. Well, you look at this Louisville team, man, last year and this year, Corby Otis has been tremendous. Yeah, I mean, so many stats uh, look out to me, but the 13-game reach base streak is incredible because that means that Duke has to prepare for her to be on base this series. And it, there's always more pressure on when you know you have a player that's going to be on base. On the flip side for Duke, Anna Gold has been absolutely dominant to the plate as of late. She's a stud. I mean, four out of her last eight hits have been home runs. She had a walk-off win to clinch the series against Notre Dame last weekend with a three-run shot. I mean, right now, if you're Louisville, you are going to be very careful pitching to her. Taking a look at Jayla Wright, who gets the start in the circle for the Blue Devils. Her first year really carrying the load for this Duke pitching staff. Yeah, some really senior pitchers leaving from Duke last year. Jayla has had to pick up some of that weight, but the key for her is to really stay within herself. She's won some really quality ball games already this year, and confidence is going to be key for her. Look at those numbers for Wright. Part of a pitching staff that has stepped up this year. Of course, Peyton St. George graduating from this program. Graham, one of the all-time greats, as Corby Otis leads things off for Louisville. Enters today on a 10-game hitting streak, 13-game on base streak. Yeah, what you'll see here is it's going to be key for Jayla to get ahead of these hitters early. We know that Louisville has had a little bit of a struggle getting people on and getting people in. So for Jayla, she needs to get into the zone early and pick up some early strikes. Well, quite the early challenge for her. Otis, the sophomore from Littleton, Colorado, coming off of an 8 for 17 weekend. Had a double, a couple of triples. Let's get a look at Jayla Wright and her second season at Duke after transferring in from Michigan State. Jayla is so much fun to watch. She has so much passion up there on the mound. But for her, like I mentioned before, she hasn't ever had the pressure of being that one pitcher, that starting pitcher on a Friday. And so that is a huge step and a, a big step in her game. And one thing she has to remember is there's a lot of really quality pitchers behind her for the Duke Blue Devils. Back to her last outing, did allow a tied for her season high, three earned runs coming across, five innings, six strikeouts and four walks in a, a game against Charlotte that went to nine innings, 5-4 win for Duke as Otis grounds this and hops into right field. It is a leadoff single, so make that 14 games in a row on base, 11 straight with a hit. Yeah, and, and now the key for Louisville is going to be to get her around. Maybe look for some short game up here with no outs on the board to see if they can move her to second, maybe a steal, but the key for them is going to be scoring early. Taking a look at this Louisville offense, and you just mentioned getting her around. You talked to Holly April, head coach of this Cardinals team. That's been the big holdup for them, struggling to just bring runners home when they get on base. Yeah, absolutely. And here, I mean, this is a dream. First inning, no outs, runner on. Now they have the ability to do a little bit more of a short game approach if they want, or they can work to hit to the right side. Obviously, with a runner on first, you're trying to hit to the right side to allow the base runner to maybe even get two and head to third. Sarah Gordon at the plate, the freshman catcher from Lexington, South Carolina. And she laces this off the glove of Baker. And back-to-back -back singles, Louisville in business in the first inning. Yeah, one thing I want to point out here is both of the balls so far have been hit hard. Louisville is seeing the ball out of Jayla Wright's hand. A couple of base knocks for the Cardinals. Otis and then Sarah Gordon getting on base. Now this is what Coach Holly April was talking to us about, right? They have runners on, and now the key is to execute and get them in. 
Now, if you're Duke here, you're looking to potentially turn for two. If it's a hard shot, like they've hit the past few times, looking to go three or looking to go two in order to get some outs on the board. And a file steps in. File, somebody who was injured in the season opener, was playing at first base and the base runner collided into her. Great to see her back. And hey, you talk to Coach April, she says that she is the crucial piece of this lineup to bring those runs across. Yeah, and you know, it's always hard coming back from an injury, especially from a concussion or anything where your head is involved, just because obviously with a softball, you're having to see the ball come in at such a fast speed. Sometimes it can take a few games to get your timing down, to just feel yourself again. And so that's something that Coach April is hoping happens for File. File played in two games on Saturday, combined 0 for 5. That was her first action since February 26th, still dealing with the after effects of that injury. And she rolls it foul and Wright works ahead one and two. Yeah, great off-speed pitch for Jayla Wright. Being ahead, you do not want to give her anything that she can hit solidly, right? Use those corners, use the river, and make her earn her way back into this at-bat. One thing about Wright is they did have a little bit more of a tough game on Wednesday. You have to wonder if maybe this has bled over just a little bit into the weekend. Yeah, she runs inside and Hannah File. Base is loaded, nobody out. File gonna get some extra stretches in there. Holly April in charge of this program, fifth year as the woman running the show for the Cardinals, somebody who you had the chance to play against when she was at Pitt. Yeah, I was talking to her on Friday or on Thursday, and I was telling her, I was like, gosh, I hated playing against her. <laughs> She's so intense, and that goes into the players. You can feel it. She is such a competitor. She talked about being, thinking of herself as a little bit more of a blue collar coach and really working for it. And I think you're gonna see that today from the Louisville team. It was interesting when she was talking about her team this year. She said they have some experience, but you look overall, they're a younger group uh, in this 2023 roster. She wouldn't call them a bunch of seasoned veterans, and this is a tough task for a relatively young team first weekend of ACC play. Yeah, and Coach April's still relatively new to Louisville, and when you take over a program, unlike Coach Young, who started the program, you are coming into a team that was coached by someone else. There's a lot of adjustments that have to be made, far more than just you know, how you catch and how you throw and how you swing a bat. There's a lot of um, mental things to work there through. There's a lot of different aspects of the game and that takes time. And I think that's something that Coach April is seeing as she's becoming more tenured here at Louisville. Taylor Roby at the plate. Roby lines it to third, gold, snags and tags. A double play at Anna Gold getting it done at the bat and in the field. There is a reason why Anna Gold has started every single game at third base. She makes ESPN plays over and over and over again, and we're not even that far into the season. And how does that flip the script in this? Base is loaded, no outs to two outs and two on. We'll see what Daisy Hess can do. Yeah, and Don, we were just talking about this. It's so important for Louisville to take advantage of the opportunity. And, and you know what? With that pitch, there's, there's nothing you can do a hard hit in the wrong spot. Now, one adjustment that probably should be made is when there's a runner on third base and there are no outs and bases loaded, you wanna make sure the ball gets through the infield before you leave. So you're probably, you probably shouldn't even be taking any sort of lead. You see the ball get through and then you go. But it's also difficult because if the ball is hit on the ground, then obviously you don't wanna turn yourself into a double play. So it's a really tricky spot on a goal doing a fantastic job at third base. Right quickly ahead, 0-2 with two down on Daisy Hess, who was hitless in her last three games. And we're talking a lot about taking advantage of the moment. Jayla Wright needs to take advantage of this moment. Say thank you, Anna Gold. I appreciate the first two. I'm going to work for this third out. Ahead one and two. Louisville had started this inning off with the bases loaded and nobody out. But the double play by Gold at third has changed the dynamics. Lifted two golds. Plenty of time to get there, and Anna Golds does it all by herself in that inning. Taking down the Cardinals, Louisville kept off the scoreboard despite loading the bases.
Melissa Zabala, the young right-hander, takes the circle for Louisville. Her coach calls her Zabala because she has been that good this season. Yeah, Coach April had really great things to say about her, saying that she wants the ball, she's aggressive, and she's confident. And that's not something you see from freshmen taking the mound, transferring from that high school level game to the collegiate softball game. Very impressive and excited to see how she pitches today. She has quite the challenge today, although coming off of a really good performance against Northern Kentucky with 12 strikeouts, but against a high-octane Duke offense, which starts with Deja Davis as the DP for the Blue Devils. Deja Davis, a grad student, coming back to play her last year as a Blue Devil. She is someone who is both a leader off the field and on the field, uh, an incredible player, and, and one of the first All-Americans for the Duke softball program. And you look at her career, she has faced so much adversity, injuries, and just, she plays through pain, and, and it was to the point where Coach Young told us earlier the week that they didn't think that Deja was going to be playing softball this season, but she's persevered through another surgery, through rehab. And she said the team wants to play for Deja. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's so much that goes into it. It's not just the physical pain that she's feeling. There's probably so much that goes into getting yourself back to a place mentally to be able to play. She doesn't get as much reps. Coach Young told us earlier in the week that a lot of times she wants to be practicing, but the best thing for her is to be sitting out. And that can be really tough to not get the reps in. A lot of times reps are what make you feel confident going into that weekend, into those weekend games. And so now for her, she's had to find a way to play with the pain that she's dealt with the past few years. And Davis K'd up, first strikeout for Alyssa Zabala, who again had 12 of them against Northern Kentucky last time out. You can tell Zabala throws that pitch and she finishes. Little hair flip, she is confident out there. You can tell she is ready to play today. Yeah, she does not carry herself like a freshman. No, absolutely not. Brings up an, another freshman to the opposite side of things for Duke. It's Deanna Jennings, highest rated recruit in, pro, uh, one of the highest rated recruits in program history. Yeah, Jennings is someone who is going to apply a lot of short game bunts, slaps, but she has had a little bit of trouble from being out of the box, which is when she makes contact with the ball and one of her feet is outside of the box. And so when she was struggling with that a little bit, she actually swung away without even doing so in practice and tripled. So this is a player that has a lot of tools in her toolkit. And Coach Young is like, it has told us she is willing to do whatever it takes to be on the field. Well, you mentioned her swing. She, she didn't start playing club ball until the 14U level. And when she started, she was actually a righty. And they switched her to the left side of the plate as a slapper. And uh, hey, here she is at Duke a few years later. Yeah, I think she's an athlete. She's someone that's going to be able to pick up different skills pretty quickly. And you can tell, I mean, you would not know that she started maybe a little bit later than a lot of other of her teammates. One, two, roll. That is a fair ball as Jennings makes her way to second. It is a double for the freshman. Jennings had no doubt she was rounding first and going to second. You could tell when the left fielder slipped a little bit or, or maybe dove to get that ball. She was on her way to second and she knew she was going to be safe. Now that looks like it was a slip watching the replay. One thing to mention is there has been rain today. The grass is going to be slippery. The dirt is going to be wet. Obviously, both teams have to deal with the same problems or issues, but it's something to watch as we get into this game, knowing that the outfield is going to be slick. It had been drizzling all day, and we lucked out for sure because uh, there was some concern initially that game times might have been changed. In fact, Sunday's game was moved to tomorrow. Yeah, and that's something that the ACC did away with. It used to be that you played one, or, sorry, two games on Saturday, one game on Sunday. But a lot of the other conferences were doing Friday, Saturday, Sunday. The ACC then switched over to that. And I will tell you, as a former softball player at Duke, when I played double headers, not only was it physically exhausting, but it could be a really long day. It's hard to stay locked in for that amount of time. But again, both teams have to deal with the same circumstances, so they'll both have to be up to that challenge tomorrow. Tapia on a hop has no trouble, and there's two down as Anna Golds gets set to step to the plate for the first time today. 
great job from Tapia being able to move the runner over to third. And again, just like we've been talking about all games so far, it's important for them to capitalize with runners in scoring position. That is the name of the game. And an early visit to the circle. Let's see how Louisville approaches one of the hottest bats in America and Anna Gold, the reigning ACC Player of the Week who has notched a home run in her last three games and four of her last five. Look at these numbers. She has been the best hitter in the ACC this year. Yeah, it's hard not to be leading the ACC in RBIs when four of your last eight hits have been home runs. If I'm Louisville, I'm being extremely careful of what I pitch on a goal today, knowing how hot she is, especially with two open bases. And it's an adjustment that Anna has to make too, because for her, she knows that she's hot. She knows that a lot of the pitchers are not gonna throw her as good of pitches as maybe they would someone else who's not hitting as well. So she has to be extremely selective. That's something that Coach Young said she's improved upon. Maybe at times last year was swinging for the fences too often. This year, a bit more selective and has learned to become a better situational hitter. Yeah, I mean, she's aggressive. That's the, that's the reason that she has so many home runs. I mean, she swings to crush the ball, but you just have to be a little bit more choosy on what pitches you choose. And she's doing a great job here because none of these pitches are super far outside of the strike zone but she knows that she has to be looking for her pitch in order to swing, especially here on 3-0. And that finds the zone, 3-1 now the count on Golds. Third team all ACC selection last year. So you get a look at head coach Marissa Young. Yeah, Coach Young, like we said earlier, Coach April is someone who took over the program. Coach Young is someone who started the Duke softball program. Gold flares out to Easton Lotus, and we head to the top of the second. Both teams had opportunities in the first, neither able to capitalize. Still scoreless here in Durham. Duke Outfields, they're fired up early in this one. We are scoreless between the 15th ranked Blue Devils and the Louisville Cardinals. This Duke defense at times says struggled this season getting a look at their alignment. They are second to last in the ACC in fielding percentage. Yeah, it's a new infield for them and it's a young infield. So the mistakes are gonna happen. Like I said earlier to start off the broadcast, preseason doesn't matter anymore. They're in ACC play and they're gonna need to just shake that off, be able to improve because it, it doesn't necessarily matter what their stats are right now. It matters moving forward that they're able to clean it up a little bit. Easton Lotus leads things off for the Cardinals in the top of the second. This an inning removed from Louisville starting off the first with the bases loaded and nobody out. Lotus started season uh, started off the season in the leadoff spot. Has fluctuated throughout the lineup. We've seen a couple of lineup changes for Louisville this season. Yeah, and it's, again, it's still early in the season. Coach April's trying to figure out what works. And also, it's a long season, so there are going to be times when players aren't as hot. It's funny because I think that when you're a younger player and you're in travel ball or high school, it matters so much to you what position in the lineup you're hitting at. The college level, there's so much to it. Earlier in the season, Anna Gold was batting lower because Coach Young wants her to be able to lead off the next inning. I mean, there's so many things that go into it. First strike out of the game for Jayla Wright as she K's up Easton Lotus. Yeah, when Jayla's throwing her stuff, she's throwing the low ball well, and you can see it there. A pitch that is just barely a strike, couldn't leave it up to, to the umpire, and so with two strikes, she swung. Allie Alexander steps in, the sophomore from Taylorsville, Kentucky, hitless in her last five games. Yeah, Jayla Wright needs to really capture that last strikeout that she has, really channel that to be able to start feeling really confident on the mound again for Louisville. They've struggled a little bit with the bats, and so right now it's kind of like, okay, who's going to step up? Is it going to be the pitcher or is it going to be the offense? And whoever I feel like whoever is able to do that first is going to have a big advantage knowing that, you know, Louisville has really struggled a little bit and Jayla Wright has had really great games and then somewhere she hasn't been able to perform as well. Alexander, just 111 in the season. 
And right after the strikeout, gets behind 3-0. And that's a key in softball, right? Softball and baseball, getting ahead early. It's always gonna be a lot tougher the more balls you throw. One thing about Jayla Wright is that a lot of times, especially this season, it has taken her a little while to warm up. So, you know, she just needs to be able to find her pitches, find her locations, and really be able to kind of dial in here. We spoke to Coach Young earlier, and she did say that she pitches by committee. It doesn't matter how good a pitcher is. No one's going to get all of the innings, all of the games. And so that is something that the Duke softball pitchers have really rallied around, being a unit, being able to support each other. They all are vastly different. And Coach Young is something said that that is, that is something that she wants them to really celebrate. Right, Mrs. Lowe. And Hey, it's a Duke staff that has produced some really solid numbers this season. 176 team ERA. You can't get much better than that. No, absolutely not. And the great thing is, is if it's not your best day, there's someone to back you up. The worst thing to do is to be a pitcher where you don't have anyone to relieve you. So the fact that Jayla Wright has so many pitchers behind her that, that can come in should build a lot of confidence for her. Vanessa Miller now to the plate with one on and one down for Louisville. He talked to Coach Young earlier in the week, and she, she made it clear that the Charlotte game on Wednesday was really the first time this season that the pitchers as a whole just did not have a good day. Other than that, they have been solid. Yeah, and the fact that they were able to still squeeze out that win is great for the Duke program as a whole. But you always wonder with a game on Wednesday, it is hard to really recover so quickly, but it's something that is necessary in order to be the best at the collegiate level for softball because of how many games they play in a season. Typically, they're playing at least one midweek game on a Wednesday, if not a doubleheader, and then they're gonna go and they're gonna play their conference, which is one game Friday, one game Saturday, one game Sunday. Averaging four to five games per, per week can be really difficult if mentally you're not able to leave mistakes in the past. Well, there were 217 hitter falls behind one and two. Was 0 for five in two games on Sunday. Already one strike out this inning from Jayla Wright, a strike away from number two. And there it is, two Ks in the second for Jayla Wright. Love the off speed there. Jayla Wright is able to mix in her drop ball, her change up, and really keep everyone on their toes. Two down for the nine hitter in Paige Garrity. First year player at Louisville after a couple of seasons with the Auburn Tigers. And Coach April said she didn't get as many innings when she was with the Tigers. She's now starting to come into her own, get those innings in, and really perform for Louisville. Had a mixed bag this past weekend was 0 for 2 in two games against a ranked Northwestern team. And the other three games, though, was 4 for 8. We'll see how she does today against Duke. Fouls off that pitch. She played two seasons at Auburn, 70 games in total, and comes from a winning program. Made a couple of NCAA regionals with the Tigers out of the SEC. As you said, though, mainly as a, as a pinch runner, didn't get a ton of reps at the plate. Yeah, the portal these days is pretty active, but I think it's great. She's able to find an opportunity that fits better for her, and she's able to play more innings, and, and as you can see here, taking advantage of the opportunity in the starting lineup for Louisville. One thing to note that's something that teams keep track of in the dugout and, and after the games is how many innings can you get a runner on? Obviously you want to score them, but it's also important to continue to apply that pressure. So for Louisville, in both innings so far, they've been able to get runners on. That's a checked box for them. Yeah, two for two so far in that regard. And the base is loaded with nobody out in the first. And a stellar 
Double play by Anna Gold at third. Really changed the complexion of the first inning. Three one to Garrity. And the count runs full. Yeah, great location by Jayla right there, really painting the corner beautifully. Inside pitch, it's clearly not what she wanted. So now we're gonna go to a full count. Already two Ks this inning for Jayla Wright. And that one misses just inside, and we head to the top of the order as Garrity works the full count walk. Yeah, a great 3-2 pitch by Jayla Wright. Looks like she just barely missed painting that corner. And now we're back where we were last inning with Louisville, runner in scoring position, and trying to make something happen here with two outs. This is the story. Coach April told us they have to be able to produce when runners get on base. They had Hannah File up last time. She lined into a double play. And now it's the top bat in this order, percentage-wise, and Corby Otis, top of the order for Louisville. Yeah, if you're Duke, you're a little frustrated right now because you really didn't want to turn the lineup over with runners in scoring position. It would have been a lot more comfortable for them to get out of the inning and have Otis back up when there's no one for her to score in. Otis is a fascinating story. She wants to be a cardiothoracic surgeon and lists her favorite hobby as suturing, which I did speak to a couple people in the medical field. They said that is normal of people who aspire to be doctors. <laughs> That's definitely not what I was doing in between games no. during college, but I love it. Clearly, she knows what she wants to do, and, and that's awesome. And one thing about the ACC is it's such a strong conference academically Absolutely. as well as athletically, and you'll see a lot of these players are doing really cool things in the classroom as well as on the field. Otis falls behind one and two. Right now is key for Jayla Wright to be able to put something off the plate that still looks good for Otis. She does not want Otis to be able to get a piece of this ball with runners in scoring position and two outs. It's key for her to close down the inning. Great pitch, definitely not hittable, but not close enough where Otis thought that it was going to be close and needed to swing. 2-2 two, two on Otis, two down and two out. Her dad writes and sings country songs. Her mom also works in the medical field, and as she put it, makes for a very interesting dynamic at the dinner table. Great job by Otis, fouling it off, staying in the count. It was close, but not what she wanted. Now she gets another pitch. Four twenty nine batting average for Corby Otis. And it's in the dirt. Rodriguez able to keep it just in front of her, but both base runners advance. So two in scoring position for the Cardinals. Great job by Louisville to identify ball in the dirt and run, putting even more pressure on Jayla Wright. And if she does happen to walk Otis, then we really are back in the same position we were last inning. 3-2 from Wright, who started this at bat ahead one and two. This is important for Jayla Wright because this is not the last time she's going to be in this situation. The ACC is so tough. Coach Young put together a very challenging schedule for them. So she needs to get comfortable in these types of situations because she's going to find herself with runners in scoring position quite a bit just because of the nature of their schedule. You mentioned the tough schedule. It's already been a gauntlet. Four ranked wins for the Blue Devils as Wright deals in the 3-2 and Otis again fights it off. Yeah, you know, the first few games for them were tough. They lost to Washington and then to Oklahoma, but then beating number four, Arkansas, I think was a huge win for them. And when we talked to Coach Young, she said that proved to themselves that they were as good as the coaching staff had been telling them. 
She said it was a huge confidence boost for the young Blue Devils. And again, Otis fouls it away. Quite the battle brewing here in the second. Here's a look back at some of the ranked opponents for Duke. Hey, you go through that gauntlet of a stretch. Four wins, that's solid. Yeah, and one thing to point out is Stanford has only lost twice this season. They battled Oklahoma, obviously. <laughs> you watch softball all, <laughs> you know how dominant Oklahoma is and how much they score. And a really close game against both Washington and Alabama. Yeah, the third fewest runs for Oklahoma, that's the, that they scored in that game, which is saying something as Otis laces this to center and a leaping catch is made by Deanna Jennings. So once again, Louisville gets ducks in the ponds, but Duke keeps them from coming across. Still scoreless, bottom two after this. Well, it's not every day that a coach can say that they actually built a program from the ground up, truthfully. And, and Marissa Young can say that in her sixth year in charge of this program and what a job she has done. Jillian, you played for her at multiple schools, UNC, and then here when she was the head coach uh, as, as uh, at Duke. It must make you so proud to see what she's done with this Blue Devils program. Yeah, I, I couldn't be more proud. Obviously, I knew Coach Young when she accepted the offer to come start the program at Duke and I never doubted her for a second, and here's why. Coach Young is a competitor, an All-American at Michigan. She was a pitcher, she was a hitter, she does it all, and she's taken that same work ethic, and she's brought it to the Duke softball program, and that's why they've had such great success so quickly in their career, is because of Coach Young and the way that she has modeled. She's walked the walk and talked the talk. Yeah, Kyrie Rodriguez leads things off. She was the Big Ten Pitcher of the Year and Big Ten Player of the Year as Rodriguez fouls it away. Yeah, and you know, one thing about Coach Young, especially like when I was there in year one, is she'll pitch to the girls, <laughs> she, she can still hit the ball. So it's really helpful not only to have her, but to have a full staff of coaches who know what it's like to compete at such a high level. How'd you do in your battles with uh, Coach Young at the plate? You win some and you lose some. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> She still has a pretty solid changeup, I'll tell you that much. Kyrie Rodriguez at the plate, one of, another one of those young players for the Blue Devils, freshman from West Palm Beach. RBI in three straight games for her, and uh, she was a hero to some degree in the game against uh, Charlotte to really propel Duke in the latter portions, a two run uh, home run in the sixth. Yeah, you know, cracking the lineup as a freshman is tough, but especially as a catcher, I'm sure we're gonna see more from Rodriguez tonight, uh, but definitely difficult to be able to even get into the starting lineup as a freshman. Rodriguez lands out to Hannah File at first. Brings up Amina Vega, starting at second base today for the Blue Devils. Another freshman, highest ranked recruit in Duke history the number two overall prospect, part of a class that was ranked ninth nationally for Marissa Young. Yeah, you know, softball players want to not only perform on the field, but a lot of times not that many have the opportunity to go pro. So you want to go somewhere where academically you're setting yourself up. And again, I mentioned it before, but the ACC is filled with so many high quality academic schools as well. And Duke is obviously no joke when it comes to academics. And you really have to be able to work hard, not only on the field, but believe me, I've been there <laughs> in the classroom as well. It's a lot of really long, tough nights, um, but it's worth it. Oh, no, no doubt about that. And Vega, young player from Florida, top infield recruit in the nation coming out of high school, was initially committed to Central Florida and flipped to Duke. And Coach Young gave some of the greatest praise you can give a young player. She said that she sees Anna Golds in Amina Vega, which given the way Gold's been playing this year, that speaks volumes. Yeah, absolutely. It, it takes time to be able to find yourself in the collegiate game and adjust to so many different things that a lot of them we've already talked about between the the intensity of the schedule there's also the balancing of the academics and the athletics uh, but as you can see here with this line drive shot off the glove of garrity gets it in quickly and it is a double for vega the second two bagger for the blue devils in the evening solid line shot 
hidden opposite field. And she's got tons of speed too. It was no question that she was able to, to slide in safely there at second base. Mina Vega standing aboard in scoring position. Fourth double of the season for the freshman and we'll see what Claire Davidson can do. A dynamic two-way player. Back-to-back -back players in this Duke lineup from Florida. Two of the seven players from the Sunshine, uh, Sunshine State in this Duke team. Davidson is a player that's really come into her own this year. She's looking great on the mound, but she's also hitting for power. It is so difficult to be good at one of those things, let alone two. A 316 batting average is fantastic for someone who just hits, let alone is also dominant on the mound. Quickly behind 0-2 against Alyssa Zabala. Hey, and credit to Zabala. I mean, they have, she has shut down some really quality hitters for the Duke lineup so far, and she's doing it with a lot of confidence. You can kind of tell a lot by a pitcher's body language. Oftentimes, especially when they're young, they have trouble hiding it, especially when they're struggling. And you can tell just by w watching her, she is ready to go. She is firing on all cylinders. Yeah, she toes the rubber quickly as Davidson rolls it into center. Vega being sent home. Throw in from Otis, not in time. Claire Davidson, the RBI, and Duke strikes first. Davidson just trading places with Vega. You can see how fired up Vega is when she slides home. We just talked about Claire Davidson coming into her own. That's all you need is just a shot up the middle, scoring Vega. Like we talked about, she has speed. Coach Young sending her all the way, and it wasn't even too close. Duke opens up the scoring at the bottom of the second. And Jada Baker, an opportunity to add to this lead after the double by Davidson. You mentioned her batting average 316, also a 330 ERA. I mean, it's remarkable what she's able to do in so many facets as Baker shows bunt. And one thing you don't see too often is a pitcher who hits. What you see even less often is a pitcher who hits and then also runs the bases. But they get into a little bit of a sticky situation because she is playing right field. Who knows, they might have her as a backup in for this game. You never know. But so the ability to be able to pitch, hit, and run, that you really don't see that too often. Jada Baker, 250 hitter this season. It in her last two games and first year as a starter had the chance to learn behind one of the all-time greats in this program, Jamison Cable. Yeah, Coach Young said she's so proud of the way that she's been able to come into her own at shortstop. One thing about shortstop is that you, the rest of the team gains a lot of confidence by the way that the shortstop performs. I don't know, it's, it's one of those things where they're a leader on the field and her ability to come in and take over a position that was owned by Cable for so many years is uh, just a tribute to the type of player that she is. And off the field, Coach Young described her as the mama bear of the team. She's the one who kind of rallies everything together, is in the office all the time, and uh, is setting up the field before practice. Yeah, and one thing to note on here, she just had a missed bunt opportunity. So now that she has two strikes, she's going to have to perform by finding a way to get the ball on the ground or a deep fly ball to right field. Coach Young really wanted to get that runner in Davidson over to third base with two outs. It's funny because bunting is something that when you're younger, you don't want to do it. You think bunting is only when you're not good enough to hit. Now the best hitters are also great bunters. 3-2 to Baker. Flares it to Hessen. There's two outs. So we head to the nine hitter in Francesca Freelich with Davidson standing on second, looking to add to this Duke advantage. Yeah, Freelick has a really great opportunity right now to score another run for the Blue Duke Blue Devils. Obviously, one run is a great start, but they know that that's probably not going to be enough to win this game. The more runs they can tack on early, the more insurance they're going to have. Freelick hitless in her last six games. Her brother Sal, an elite prospect in the Milwaukee Brewers organization, currently playing for Team Italy in the World Baseball Classic. Yeah, it's awesome to be able to. She lines this into left, and nice throw in from Garrity. So that keeps Davidson on third, but another base knock for the Blue Devils. 
great job by Freelick to be able to take that additional base. She knows that they're worried about Davidson on third. You can tell that she's taking the opportunity to, to be able to put two runners in scoring position instead of just one. I know that that sounds simple, but it's, it's, it happens quite often when you catch a runner snoozing and she doesn't take advantage of the second base opportunity. Great heads up by Freelick. Fourth hit for Duke against Alyssa Zabala. Now the freshman has to go through the grad student, Deja Davis, who is once again hitting at an All-American level, 415 of the season. The lefties seem to have, the lefties seem to be having a little bit more success so far in this game for the Duke Blue Devils. It'll be interesting to see how Deja Davis reads the ball now at her second at bat. She's 0 for 1 today with a strikeout back in the first. Two of four against Charlotte earlier this week. And ninth in the ACC with that 415 batting average. So good to see for the Blue Devils, especially with everything she's been through in her career. And she works ball three. Yeah, one thing about Davis is she's so compo composed. She is always has it together, at least so it seems. And she is really selective and picks really good pitches normally to hit, which is why she's had so much success. Ball four and a four pitch walk issue to Deja Davis. So a free 60 for the leadoff batter. And it brings up Deonna Jennings, already one for one with a double. Yeah, and it looks like Coach Young is going to make a substitution here. Like we said, Jennings is primarily a short ball player, so they're going to bring in someone who has a little bit more power. And a visit to the circle as well. Looks like they're bringing in Christiana Watson, a transfer from Arizona State. She has been put in this position multiple times already this season. It's interesting, I've talked about the mental game already so much in this game. It takes a lot to be able to come in and perform. Bases loaded two outs is not the easiest place to be. But obviously Coach Young trusts her to get the job done or else she wouldn't have put her here in this position. Well, she has a knack for the clutch moments in her career. Last year, a walk-off home run against Duke as a member of Arizona State. Also a clutch, a clutch grand slam for the Sun Devils in the regionals last year as she was upstairs on the first pitch. Behind Owen, one now against the freshman Zabala. Great job, it looks like that's a similar pitch to what she got the first time, learning from her misses there. It's key, she obviously doesn't have multiple at-bats to be able to learn the pitcher, right? So she has to make those adjustments as a pinch hitter even quicker. And Watson behind one and two now with the bases loaded as Zabala looks to keep it at a one-run deficit. For bases loaded, Zabala looks pretty darn confident out there. I'd say so, the young freshman, a strike away from getting out of the inning. Great eye by Watson. A lot of times when you're in this big pressure situation and two strikes, you kind of just want to swing at everything. So great eye not chasing something out of the zone. You can tell another adjustment. She's been swinging and missing so far. Now she's able to foul it off, so you can tell she's starting to adjust to maybe the speed. Her eyes are adjusting to the pitches, and if you're Zabala right now, you want to end this before she's able to really catch a hold of one. Freshman has one strikeout so far. Deals in the 2-2, and Watson lines it foul. Count stays put. Another little solid adjustment. The first time she hit the ball right back, shows that her timing is pretty much there. This time it looks like she was able to take something inside and rope it. That's the name of the game. Keep just hitting those pitches, fouling them off until you find something that's high quality to hit. And Watson watches ball three. 
great eye by Watson. Again, it is so difficult to not just try to foul tip everything that comes your way off when you have two strikes in a three and two, two out bases loaded situation. And Zabala walks in a run. Ball four taken by Christiana Watson and Duke leads it by two. Great job by Watson. Was her job to come in and get a hit? No, not necessarily. Her job was to move the runners, and that's what, exactly what she did. She didn't need to be the hero and hit a grand slam. She just needed to push everyone one base ahead, and that's exactly what she did. So back-to-back -back walks issued by Zabala. You just saw Watson make her way back to the dugout, and it's Deanna Jennings who heads over to first base as Giselle Tapia settles in at the plate. Chance to break this thing wide open in the second inning. Coach Young calling Giselle Tapia an unsung hero. She is someone who's had to move into a, many different roles, many different positions, and now she's someone who's been able to fully crack the lineup, and what a great shot there to left. But it's well played by Paige Garrity, and that wraps up the second inning. Duke gets across a couple of runs as we head to the top of the third. Blue Devils by a pair in Durham. A little game of tag going on down the first baseline. Some young fans enjoying Duke Softball Stadium. The Blue Devils have an early edge, 2-0. Look at that, bark in the park. It's always bark in the park uh, here with uh, fun night on Friday. Some fans checking out the action. Hey, we were we got really lucky with this weather. It looked pretty bad for most of the day. It's cleared up though. Yeah, it really has, and it's it's chilly out. But hey, anytime there's no rain, I think right. everyone is very grateful <laughs> for that. Softball is not a sport. I know no sport is great to play in the rain, but softball in particularly with trying to grip the pitch is just it can be brutal. Sarah Gordon gets things started. Two, three, four, two up for Louisville. Cardinals in their ACC opener looking to get it off of the right foot. If you're Louisville, it's really important right now to strike back. It's okay, two runs is, is something that they can recover from, but what you wanna do is you wanna get runners on base just like she did here. It is an infield single for Sarah Gordon who moves to two for two now, a couple of base knocks for her. I like to say it all comes out in the wash. There's gonna be really solid shots that you hit and someone catches like from Anna Gold earlier. And then there's gonna be kind of those little dribble hits that somehow make their way in. It looks like Jayla Wright just not only was not able to get to the ball quick enough, but also not be able to stay in her legs to, to create an accurate throw to first base. Hey, a hit is a hit, you'll take it, right? Yeah, absolutely. Brings up Hannah File who was hit by a pitch in her first plate appearance. Yeah, she pokes this towards right, and a sliding catch is made by Freelich. I don't know if you could tell on TV how hard that ball was hit. I think Freelich kind of dove just to make sure she could put her body in front of that. I mean, that was a shot, and great job by Freelich because that did curve at the end. That's why you could tell she had to dive a little bit for it. That was not an easy catch to make and a really great shot. Sends Taylor Roby to the plate, who was 0 for 1. And if she had somehow missed that ball, that's at least two bases for File as Roby, who is now Louisville's all-time home run leader in a career, watches upstairs. Another high-level two-way player. We talked about Davidson before for Duke. Roby, just dynamic in all facets of the game. Yeah, it's awesome to be able to have a pitcher that can also help herself out and with leading Louisville in home runs. I mean, talk about helping yourself out. Take a look at some of these numbers for Taylor Roby. Just simply ridiculous. Last two years leading the team in home runs and wins in the circle, and she's possibly on track to do that again. I'd imagine she'll continue to get those wins up. Even if she wasn't a pitcher, those are fantastic <laughs> right. stats to have, let alone being an incredibly dominant pitcher. 0.74 ERA this year and a 3.39 batting average. Although Jayla Wright works ahead of her one and two. Yeah, kudos to Roby, a veteran on this team, a leader on this team. She's coming back again for one more season to be able to take Louisville and, and hopefully make a name for themselves in the ACC. One, two to Roby, checks her swing. Toss from Vega, they get one. 
And the second is not in time. It is a fielder's choice, and there's two down. Looked like Rodriguez thought she might have had her there. She did a premature little fist pump as she was backing up first base. Great job by Roby for hustling down at that point. Once you're in that situation, the only thing you can do is make sure that you two don't get out. Bang, bang, play at first, and Roby is safe as Daisy Hess steps to the plate. Hess is 0 for 1. And great job by Vega, too. When you're fielding a ground ball and the runner's already passing you, it takes a lot of confidence to be able to make that quick play and still get that out. It would have been a lot easier for her to go to 1, but obviously keeping a runner out of scoring position for Duke is key right now. Hess hitless in her last three games. That followed a streak of 15 games on base. It ended Sunday against Northwestern. First year at Louisville after transferring in from Georgia State, an all-region player for Georgia State. You know, one thing that I find so funny about the stats in softball is they don't always tell a complete story. You really, you don't know if she's been hitless in the past three games, if she's been crushing it and just hitting really hard shots to people, or if maybe she's really struggling. You always need a little bit more context to know. And three games in softball especially is pretty much nothing, I think. You can you can almost forget that you haven't had a, a hard hit in three games. But again, it's something where in softball, you don't want to get into those lulls because they are more difficult to, to come out of the longer you are in a slump. Right, able to find the strike zone now with three and one count. Let's get a head, uh, look at head coach Holly April. We talked about her before in her fifth season. Looking to bring this Louisville program back to a regional for the first time since 2019. Yeah, you know, anytime a coach comes to a new program, there's rebuilding of sorts always to do. Even if the team is really good when the new coach comes in, it, it, it truly doesn't matter because she has to bring her own style, her own strategy into the game. And it, it's always going to take a few years to, quote unquote, rebuild. Full count of the way for Jayla Wright with two down. You look at what she did last year, 27 and 25. Picked up 10 wins in ACC play. Seems to be a program headed in the right direction. Yeah, the ACC continues to get stronger and stronger. And, you know, other teams right now, Florida State, Duke, Clemson, Virginia Tech, they are all dominating the softball world right now. But when other teams have to play those teams, it makes them better too. And now better players want to come and play in the ACC. So it really helps everyone when other teams start to do well. All right, take a look at some of these rankings. Four teams of the top 15 nationally in this conference. And it's a conference, we were talking about this off air before the broadcast, but uh, it, it's been recent years where the ACC has really been elevated uh, in the upper echelon of college softball conferences. I mean, two of these teams didn't exist for the first few years that I played. Both Clemson and Duke are in their sixth and fifth seasons, I believe, as programs. I mean, they, they literally didn't have softball, and now both of them are in the top 25 consistently. The Forsyth, the pinch runner on second, and Michaela Hurst will pinch hit here for Louisville. The grad student transfer from Utah on a three-game hit streak has notched an RBI in all three of those games. Looking for her to produce here with two down and two on. Yeah, just like with Watson last inning, these players are not put into these positions if the coaches don't believe that they could produce for them. So even though she was not in the starting lineup, Coach April has put her in to do a specific job. And this is something that we that players practice all the time throughout the week, throughout the summer. You're constantly being put in tough situations to prepare for these types of moments. Third season at Louisville for Hurst. Did not play last year with an injury in the preseason. As Wright finds the zone, now a 1-1 count. This year, Hurst batting 5 for 10 as a pinch hitter, so she's been productive in these situations. I always think that batting averages for pinch hitters should have to, like, 500 should mean more yes. if you are a pinch hitter and you don't get as many opportunities, like some sort of inflation. <laughs> 
Yeah, I agree. You, you should get extra credit, right? Like some sort of right. asterisk. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, Hurst is produced in situations like this this season. 2-1 count, two down and two on. And right a strike away from wrapping up this third and posting another zero on the scoreboard. I like that swing from Hurst because that ball was in the strike zone and you're put in to hit. So if the ball is in the strike zone, there's nothing I don't think that aggravates a coach more than putting in a pinch hitter and them not taking the bat off, off of their shoulder. Two, two down. Good block though from Rodriguez. And again, a full count. It's been early, but we've seen both pitchers in some high pressure situations. Yeah, with Jayla Wright, like we said earlier, she's gonna be in this position all the time, especially in this conference. So for her, this should be just another inning, especially against her, someone who's had success. She's gonna have to find a way to get herself out of these types of situations. And Hurst draws ball four. That loads up the bases. The fourth walk of the game issued by Jayla Wright. And we might see another pinch hitter, Holly April. Make it a change. It will be Easton Lotus who re-enters at first base to run. Coach Young having a conversation with Jayla Wright. You can tell one really helpful thing about Coach Young was that she was an incredible pitcher. So she understands the situations. And a lot of times she's out there giving physical little adjustments, whether it's something that she has to change with her eyes or maybe the way that she steps with one of her feet. She's able, she's such a great in the moment coach where she's able to see those little adjustments and then go and tell the pitcher and they're able to correct them real time. You just saw some of those numbers. 37 strikes, 29 balls issued by the righty Jayla Wright in her second season at Duke. And we will see a pinch hitter for Louisville. It is Alana Ornelas who steps in, the senior from LaGrange, Kentucky. Another bases loaded situation. Luke, the Cardinals have had this twice with the bases juiced. And have yet to bring home a run. It's funny, that we were talking about this off air as well. It's almost like their coaches know their teams, right? Because <laughs> yep. all of these situations we're seeing are things that we discussed with both coaches earlier in the week. Coach April talking about, we have to be able to capitalize in runners in scoring position, especially bases loaded. Coach Young talking about with pitchers, we need to be able to capitalize and be able to deliver pitches, get ahead and be a little bit tougher on the mound. Well, Louisville thus far 0 for 3 with runners in scoring position as Holly April looks to find that answer at the plate. She's hoping that Ornelas is the one. And Ornelas watches strike two. Now if you're Jayla Wright, this is where you should be able to have fun throw some fun pitches, don't put it near the plate. You are one and two. Now the only tough part about that is with the bases loaded, she doesn't have anywhere, anywhere to put her. And Wright picks up the strikeout. Another inning that Louisville puts runners in, on base. Another inning that Jayla Wright keeps them off the scoreboard. Bottom of the third inning here from Durham, North Carolina. It is the ACC opener for the Louisville Cardinals. Meanwhile, 15th ranked Duke. They won 15 of 16 entering today, two and one in conference play. An intriguing series against Notre Dame to open up ACC action this past weekend. As you see head coach Marissa Young with uh, some hands-on demonstrating, have to appreciate that. 
Yeah, absolutely. I think it's always more comfortable in a dugout when your coaches are communicating with you throughout the game and, and giving you live adjustments. All of these players want to know how they can be better. And good players make adjustments game to game. Great players make adjustments at bat to at bat. You have to be able to adjust to whatever you were doing wrong the last at bat, because if not, you're not going to have success that often. On a gold, yeah, we mentioned the Notre Dame series. This was one of the best series she's had in her career. Eight of 15, 13 ribbies. Uh, she rips it foul, but that understandably so, and rightfully so, uh, gave her the ACC Player of the Week award. Yeah, and you know, all of that is fantastic. Her walk-off home run, three-run home run against Notre Dame. Not only do you love a walk-off, a walk-off to clinch the series. And Notre, Notre Dame, although they are not ranked, they are a tough team every single year. They are one of, I, I played Notre Dame plenty of times, they are so consistently difficult to beat, ranked or unranked. So not only did Anna Gold do an excellent job of winning that game for the Blue Devils, but clinching that series is gonna be huge because I think Notre Dame is gonna upset some teams in the ACC this season. Gold again fouls it off. And it just goes to show how competitive, top to bottom, this conference is. And that was a series that it really, if it wasn't for the play of Ana Golds, Notre Dame probably would have won. Yeah, absolutely. And and Notre Dame looked good. Duke, Duke looked good as well. But again, it's the beginning of ACC series. Everyone's still trying to figure things out. And Ana Gold really capitalized. Gold again taps away a two-strike pitch. You know, it's funny. It's the feeling of being hot and seeing the ball and it looks like a beach ball it's fantastic but then it's really difficult to not get into your own head of knowing okay well pitchers aren't going to throw me as good pitches i'm being scouted more than everyone else and so it really takes a lot of mental toughness to just stay true to yourself keep doing what you do best through the ups and downs of season but especially when you're hot because you know everyone has eyes on you 2-2 two, two from Zabala is lifted foul. Hit really hard, just in the wrong direction. Yep. Let's remember, right, like you said, all eyes on her. She's she's only a sophomore. Right. This is her second year of collegiate softball, and she is the focal point of every team playing Duke. She faces the 2-2 two, two from Alyssa Zabala. Again, fouls it away. Great job by Zabala. You know, it's really difficult having bases loaded, not getting a run across. It's really easy to get down, to lose energy as a team because you feel like the momentum is just constantly not going your way. But one thing about Zabala is every time she walks to that mound, you can tell she is full of energy. And Gold wears one of the shoulders, so she leads off the inning getting aboard. First time today that Duke leads off an inning with the base runner. Not a bad option for Zabala. Obviously, you don't want a runner on with no outs, but probably a lot better than maybe an extra base hit or potentially a home run. So if you are going to put her on, you're glad it's just a first base. Brings up Kyrie Rodriguez, who was 0 for 1 today. Has retired. Be a pop bound to Hannah File at first. And Rodriguez is in a really cool position right now because with people avoiding Anna Gold, she now has the opportunity to say, okay, wait, you're not going to pitch to Anna Gold. Good luck pitching to me. <laughs> that one finds the zone. And you look at Rodriguez. Yes, she is young, but very highly touted coming out of high school. Was an all-state player down in Florida, and that speaks volumes. Yeah, absolutely. Great behind the plate, Coach Young had so much praise for her arm and her ability to transition. She's had some really great throwdowns and some runners that she's caught stealing second. But again, it's it's really difficult to come in as a freshman and, and break the light lineup. It's even more difficult, I think, as a catcher. And I was a catcher, so maybe I'm biased. I probably am. But th there's so much work to be done to learn all of the pitchers, and she laces that one. Rodriguez finds the gap in left center. Otis able to keep it in front of her, and that prevents Gold from scoring. It is a stand-up double, Duke's third double of the game. 
I said it before her at bat. You have to pitch to me now. Sure, go ahead, walk on a gold or put her on, hit her. But now it's my turn and she delivered. An extra base hit for Rodriguez and Duke in business with nobody out and Claire Davidson. Pardon me, Amina Vega stepping in. Vega already one for one with a double. You want to talk about a confidence boost. Rodriguez knew she had to come through there. It's always a bummer when someone gets on and then you get out. Being able to deliver with a shot like that for the freshman, I mean, there she's got to feel so good right now. Here comes another freshman. Amina Vega, the highest rated recruit in Duke history. You look at this freshman class, back-to-back -back top 10 classes, but we see so many of them contributing, and it really is a changing of the guard. As you get a look at head coach Marissa Young, and she told us that class that graduated last year, those were her babies. That was her first group. It is a new era of Duke softball. Yeah, I mean, that class went through so much with Coach Young from starting the program and, and being there for year one all the way to winning an ACC championship and a Super Regional, or attending a Super Regional. Pitch gets away from Gordon and Gold, able to slide on home. Three nothing Blue Devils. Great job by Anna Gold being able to take advantage of that miss by the catcher. This is where things could get sloppy. For Louisville, glad they're taking a timeout right now, just recouping, it's okay. It's really only three runs. But this is where you have to stop the bleeding because with zero outs and Vega up, Davidson behind her, you have to be really careful because this could get out of control pretty quickly. And still nobody out in this bottom of the third. Great, Vega. Great cut by Vega. I love how she's keeping the intensity. She's attacking the zone. One for one already today at a double back in the second. Some action in the Louisville bullpen. And as that one drops into left field is an RBI single courtesy of the freshman in Vega who is two for two and it's 4-1 Duke. This is what you call passing the bat. No one's doing too much. And it looks like Coach April's coming out to make a switch on the mound. It is Cassie Grizzard who will enter the Virginia native, the only lefty in this pitching rotation, will face this Duke lineup. 4 nothing Blue Devils, nobody out bottom of the third here in Durham. Pitching change for Louisville, now down by four runs. They big up, bring out a freshman from Midlothian, Virginia, making her sixth appearance of the season. It is the lefty, Cassie Grizzard, who enters for the Cardinals. Yeah, Grizzard has a bit of a challenge up against her right now with zero outs, four runs on the board for the Blue Devils. And what she wants to do is stop the bleeding and quickly. Duke has put up two runs already this inning after scoring two back in the second as well. Grizzard enters her sixth appearance of the season, a one and one record, 391 ERA, 13 Ks, four walks in 14 and a third. And it's a lefty-lefty matchup to start it off with Claire Davidson at the plate. And Grizzard of the circle, only lefty in this rotation for Louisville. Yeah, it's definitely a different, different look, especially with a lefty-lefty matchup right now. There are quite a bit of lefties in the lineup for Duke, so it'll be interesting to see how they handle a left-handed pitcher. Davidson inside outs this. Garrity, plenty of time to get there, one away. Great job for Grizzard, just doing her job, getting outs. Grizzard, another young pitcher, only a freshman, but somebody who Coach April says has a lot of confidence. And we will see a pinch hitter as Sarah Goddard will step to the plate in favor of Jada Baker, who is 0 for 1. I love to watch 
Goddard over the years. She has been a person who is able to step up in big situations. She did have an injury that sidelined her earlier in career. If I'm correct, it was a broken hand, but she is someone who has a lot of experience for someone coming off the bench and um, has been able to really contribute to the Duke lineup. Goddard able to keep that bat back. Let's see, no, check down to first and she did go around. So it is strike one according to first base umpire Aaron Golden. 286 hitter on the season was 0 for 3 on Wednesday against Charlotte. Slow roller, Alexander just ran out of options. It is an infield hit for Sarah Goddard. Another one of those, it all comes out in the wash, right? That's the yep. second one we've seen today, one for each team where it's just that bloop in the perfect spot. Was there anything Alexander could have done there differently? No, I, I, I think that with the positioning that they have being so deep, that's one of those things where uh, I don't know, I don't know what she could have done better. She could have, she did look at second for a brief second and maybe with the ball rolling that slow, you have to know you're just going to first, but I still think it would have been pretty tough. Goddard does have speed. Brings up Francesca Freelick, one away and two on as Duke looks to add to this four nothing edge. Freelick one for one at a single back in the second. It snapped a six game hitless streak for the junior from Lexington, Massachusetts. Great changeup. We've already seen her execute it multiple times this inning. Now this is going to be an adjustment that the Duke team has to make is seeing this switching of speeds. And she has sat down on strikes by the lefty, Grizzard. Second out of the inning. If you're Duke, this is who you want up to bat right now with two outs. Davis seeing the ball well. Obviously someone who constantly contributes. Yeah, Davis steps in. Hit list today, though she did walk in her last at bat. Batting average still hovering over 400 in the season. There's quite a difference between her changeup and the rest of her pitches. And it's one of those things where she's throwing it so consistently right now. I'm pretty sure she's thrown it to every batter thus far. It's one of those things where you're gonna have to pick fast or slow because there is such a difference in those pitches. They just watch us away for ball three and a walk here would load the bases for Deanna Jennings, although we did see Watson pinch it for her last time the bases were loaded. And Davis draws ball four. Now this is interesting because Jennings cannot be subbed out here. She's already been subbed out once. If she gets subbed out again, then she would be out for the game. It's clearly Coach Young is not going to burn her. So they're talking about what do you want to do here? And I'd mentioned earlier, she hit a triple swinging having not even practiced it yet against live in practice. So it'll be interesting to see what she does here, but she, she bunts, she slaps, and she clearly does have power. So interested to see how she approaches this at bat. Enter today, third of the ACC, 456 batting average, her one for one day so far has that up 10 points. And she steps in with the bases loaded and two down. And what we've seen from Duke is you don't have to hit that ball to the fence. A lot of these runs today have been scored by just shots into the outfield. So she doesn't have to do too much. The goal is green, right? Get the ball on the ground to the green and, and score one or two runs. Now, now with two outs, runners are going. So if she's able to get something in one of those gaps, there's likely going to be two, if not three runners scored. Breaking ball finds the zone on Deanna Jennings. And Cassie Grizzard a strike away from getting out of this jam unscathed. 
An inning that has seen Duke already score twice. I love how much confidence Grizzard has in her changeup. One, two, poked foul. Great job by Jennings. She hasn't swung at it twice, but she does, she's run out of options here. So just fouling it off until she finds something good. And Jennings again fouls it off. Able to keep this at bat going. Highly touted freshman, part of this top 10 recruiting class for Duke. Back to back top 10 classes for Marissa Young and company. We've seen those results on full display with the success this program has had over the last couple of seasons. One, two, what a pitch as Grizzard spins it past the bat of Deanna Jennings. Duke strands the bases loaded, but they do get a couple more across. Four nothing Blue Devils in Durham. Marissa Young looks on, and as you see, both teams have left significant number of runners on base. The difference in this game, though, Duke, at the very least, they're three of nine with runners in scoring position. Louisville, oh, four. Yeah, I mean, this is definitely not what either coach wants right now. Leaving runners on base is one of the most frustrating things for a coach. And so what's going to be really key for both teams is to keep their energy up. Get excited that you're getting people on. Get excited that you're getting into these opportunities and use it as momentum to move forward and not get frustrated by the lack of runs scored. 8-9-1 due up for Louisville. It's Vanessa Miller who gets it started. In the top of the fourth inning, approaching the midway point of this game, and Jayla Wright remains in the circle for Duke. Now with a little bit more of a cushion to work with. Four walks, also hit a batter. Coupled with three strikeouts, three hits allowed. Great pitch for Jayla Wright. I'd still like to see a little bit more from her. When she's on, she is so much fun to watch. She has this really great energy, and she plays really loose. And right now, we're not necessarily seeing that. But on the flip side, the awesome part about that is she's not throwing her best softball today, and there's still zero runs on the board. Misses down low, and you look at Wright and her story. She started her career at Michigan State. I mean, two seasons ago at Michigan State as a freshman, had an ERA of seven. She has whittled that down last year to 209, uh, and, and this year and, and throughout last year, one of the better pitchers in the ACC. Yeah, I, I know Jayla Wright personally, and I think she's really bought into everything that Coach Young has done for her, everything that she's coaching her on. She wants to get better, she's excited to get better, and, and she wants the ball in the circle. Madison Winkler at the plate for Louisville. 3-1 count facing Winkler, who goes by Pickle. Comes from a family of University of Kentucky alums, but chose Louisville. Big rivalry. And she fouls away the 3-1. And the nickname Pickle uh, came from when she was born. Her clavicle broke. She swelled up, had bruises that turned green. And her dad looked at her and said, hey, you're Pickle. And from then on, she was known as Pickle. I guess that's kind of like a badge of honor, right? I, I, yeah. A war story of some sort. Primarily been a pinch runner this season. One for three at the plate this year. Faces a 3-2 from Jayla Wright. And she draws a walk. So Pickle Winkler is on first base after the free 60. That brings up Paige Garrity. There's a breakdown of Jayla Wright's Balls and strikes, 42 strikes, 34 balls, and another walk for the righty. Now five for the game. Infield is still in with a runner on first, expecting some short sort of short game. Paige Garrity at the plate. Transfer from Auburn. Walked in her first at bat.
And if you're Duke, it's going to be difficult to turn two with speed, but they are playing in with that intention. And Garrity went after that pitch big time and now behind 0-2. Gonna look at some of her numbers, 264 in the season, but behind against Jayla Wright. And Wright responds after the walk with a strikeout. Great job by Wright. You love to see her answer in that form. Really crisp pitches. That's the perfect pitch for two strikes because it is a ball, it is low, but it looked good enough that she felt the need to protect at the plate. Fourth strikeout for the righty, Jayla Wright. And we head to the top of the order, Corby Otis, who was one for two. And if you're right right now, you know you have a 4-0 lead. There's confidence that comes with that, or there should be confidence that comes with that. It's one of those things where no matter what happens right now, we still have the lead. She should be able to confidently and loosely throw her stuff, knowing the defense has her back and that they have runs on the board. And this is the big test in this lineup. In Otis, who is one of two today, has recorded a hit now 11 straight games. And you talked to Coach April about her. She said that she is the catalyst, and I'm sure they'd love for her to be the catalyst of a rally right now. Yeah, absolutely, and you can see that they are being a little careful with her, knowing how much she means for the Louisville offense. That finds the zone two and one. Jayla Wright, five walks, now four strikeouts after Kanga Paige Garrity. Otis bounces it to first. It is brought in by Tapia, whose throw rolls in a left. Allows Winkler to advance into third, now 60 feet away from getting a run across are the Cardinals. I like the idea of what Tapia was trying to do there. She saw that she had time, just didn't have the footwork behind her to be able to execute the throw. Next up cover, two, Quick ball, Wilson. right thought, just wasn't able to give an accurate throw. And because of the nature of the hit, the outfielders weren't necessarily in the right position to be backing up that throw. At least they were not expecting that. And that's why the runner was able to, to move to third base. So two down, once again, a runner in scoring position for Louisville. They are 0 for 4 with runners in scoring position today. 0 for 3 with two outs. And we'll see if Sarah Gordon, who Spat has been working for her today, can change that. Yeah, for Louisville, this is key. This is not the first time they've had someone on third base, and for their energy, for their morale, it's gonna be really key for them to be able to execute on this opportunity. Gets away from Rodriguez, and Winkler comes on home. Louisville on the board. Tough block, Rodriguez tried to get in front of it, wasn't able to in time, and it had just that perfect bounce that allowed the runner to come in and score at home. So after all that, didn't take a hit. It was a ball that got away from Rodriguez that brings home the Cardinals' first run of the game. And the two-header, Sarah Gordon, remains at the, uh, the plate with two balls and no strikes. It's interesting, there seems to be a lot of mirroring going on in this game. Happened yep. last inning for Duke, pass ball, and they were able to score, and now Louisville having that same opportunity. Gordon yanks it foul, well hit ball, but couldn't straighten it out. Is there in some ways less pressure now on Jayla Wright that that run has come across? Obviously you don't want to give up any runs, but you don't have to worry about somebody being on a third right now. Yeah, absolutely, I think so. There's no one on base. She's able to just throw her stuff. Obviously you should never be thinking about who's on base and what could happen and who could score because you want to be so focused, but I think it's it's close to impossible to, to not think that way. That finds the zone. So Wright is strike away from getting out of the fourth. 
One thing that we're seeing with Jayla so far is some of her pitches look really crisp and in great location. And then other times it kind of falls off. I think she's still trying to find that consistency right now. And again, it's only the top of the fourth. She has time to do so. Gordon sprays this to right and it finds the wall. Freelich fires it in. It is about as long of a single as one could possibly hit. But Sarah Gordon is now three for three today. Great job by Freelich to know that she didn't have a chance to catch that ball. Instead, setting herself up to be able to receive the bounce off the wall to stop that from becoming a double and having a runner in scoring position. Jayla Wright gives up the single. We had a couple of arms just warming up in the Duke bull bullpen, a couple of lefties. We'll see if we get any changes as Hannah File Settles in with two down and one on. File is 0 for 1 today and was hit by a pitch back in the first. If you're Coach Young, it'd be really great to be able to leave right in this game and not expose or give Louisville the opportunity to see what else they have for the rest of the weekend. Cassidy Curd warming up in the pen for the Blue Devils. Ninetieth pitch of the night for Wright finds the zone. Wright has two outs. It feels like a little bit of a longer inning. It's easy to kind of forget she already has two on the board. She just needs to close the inning, get back in there, talk with Coach Young, make some adjustments, and I think that there's still a shot that she stays in this game because she has been able to get out of a lot of situations. They only do have one run on the board. File backs off of that offering inside. And a file can be a really dangerous hitter. Transfer from James Madison, somebody who took a year off from playing, trying to figure things out, and decided to transfer to Louisville. Now in her second year with the Cardinals. So about 18 months for her between games, but somebody who has really found a role with this team and Coach April says is a bat that they absolutely need and is a critical piece of this team as she watches the 2-1. Yeah, you know, that amount of time might sound like a really long time, but when you've been playing this game your entire life, sometimes it just lets your entire body and mental reset. It allows you to start feeling like yourself again. If there were any slumps or any weird things you felt in your swing, they're surely gone. And who knows, maybe she was able to gain some perspective and, and bring back that love of the game. 3-1, hit deep to right field. Hannah File deposits one over the fence, and Louisville draws within one. Incredible job taking advantage of the opportunity. Two outs on the board. It could have easily been a 4-1 game with Duke back in the dugout, but instead they are back in the ball game 4-3. Second home run of the season for number seven. She was able to connect so well with that ball, right leaving the ball too far up in the zone, and she was able to take advantage of it. And Jayla Wright's day has come to an end. The Randy replaced by a southpaw, Lily Walker, the junior from Oklahoma, who was clutch in Duke's win over Charlotte on Wednesday, will enter. This is a one-run ball game. Don't go anywhere. Lily Walker in the circle. Lily Walker enters the circle in place of Jayla Wright. Hey, Walker has been critical out of the bullpen this season for the Blue Devils. Yeah, she's someone who, she hasn't gotten that many innings, but she stepped up when given the opportunity, and that's why she's in this game right now. She's proven to Coach Young and to the rest of the Blue Devils staff that she wants the ball, and she's willing to take on the pressure and perform in high-pressure situations. Some very impressive numbers, and like you said, fairly limited time, but hey, 4-0 record is yet to allow an earned run and she was crucial in Duke's win over Charlotte, pitching two and two thirds of shutout softball with three strikeouts and a walk. So this is a one run ball game as Louisville's all time home run queen steps to the plate and Taylor Roby after the two run blast from Hannah File. Yeah, just how we talked about that asterisk for 
batting average of pinch hitters. I feel like there should be the same for ERA yep. for pitchers who haven't had as many opportunities, but always have to come in in clutch positions like Lily Walker. Well, there's so much more added pressure, right? I mean, even now to follow up, she comes in knowing, all right, my job is to go and get their best power hitter out, and right. that's it. Yeah, with, which, with not as much of a lead as they right. had 10 minutes ago. Louisville has put up three runs so far in the top of this fourth. And three straight balls to start off the afternoon for the lefty. Again, there are two outs. Lily Walker does not have to get three outs. She just has to get one. And she misses inside, ball four. This has been an issue for Duke today in the circle. We saw five walks from Jayla Wright, and now a walk from Lily Walker. And that's not a bad walk. To walk their home run leading hitter is not a bad move, especially with two outs. But now it is key for her to capitalize and get Duke out of the inning with the lead. Daisy Hess now digs in. Hitless today 0 for 1, but she did draw a walk. By the way, Jayla Wright, her final line, three and two thirds, gave him five hits, three runs, two of which were earned, five walks and four strikeouts. It's five balls in a row for Lily Walker. She needs to be able to come back with a strike like she just On did cue. here. Yeah. Because for her, the last thing you want to do, again, is bring runners around and have people in running and scoring position with two outs, three to four. They need to get out of this inning. But if you're Louisville, you're like, no, this is perfect. Let's keep it going. Let's draw this inning out, and let's try to get back to neutral with a 4-4 ball game. Two one for Walker, still trying to locate that strike zone after walking the first batter she faced in a Roby. And she spins it in there for strike two. Like I said, a lot of mirroring in this game. New pitcher comes in, executes the changeup for both teams, seeing a lot of really similar play here. Walker just misses, full count now with two down to the fourth. And Hess lines it foul. little more up in the zone than you'd like to see from Walker. It's difficult with a 3-2 count, but the last thing you want to do is give her something that she can elevate out of this ballpark. Which we saw earlier in the sitting courtesy of Hannah File, her two-run home run. And Walker checked down to first. That stayed back from Hess. It is ball four, so back-to-back -back walks to start off the evening for the lefty Lily Walker. Let's take another look back at this last pitch. As they'll say, Hess was able to keep that bat back just enough. Ooh, that was a close one. Either way, ball for Easton Lotus. Now settles in. Hit list today, 0 for 1 is Lotus. So one thing the Duke defense doesn't necessarily have to worry about right now is probably that power, but right. instead they are now shifting their focus to the speed. The, the play is at one, unless it's hit two on a gold right next to third base or up the middle where they can tag second, they are all going one now with two outs and they just have to be aware that the batter does have speed. Another ball to start off the at-bat for Lily Walker. And 
time, Lotus watches in the zone for a strike. Louisville has put up three runs in this fourth inning, including a two-run home run by Hannah File. And Lotus got a piece of it, so Walker for the first time tonight able to work ahead and account now a strike away from ending the fourth. You know, this is where it feels so close, but yet so far <laughs> you're a Duke Blue Devil because with two outs and two strikes, you're so close to being able to get back in the dugout and get the bats in their hands. But for whatever reason, it does feel like it's still a little bit far away. Hopper fielded by Vega on the flip is in time. Louisville drops a three spot in this fourth inning, courtesy of this home run. Hannah File driving home two runs. Chilly night here at Duke Softball Stadium, campus of Duke University in Durham. Hey, Duke entered the fourth inning, a nice little four-run cushion, but Jill, as you know, it's never easy in the ACC. Yeah, absolutely not. Hannah File absolutely crushing a three-run home run to bring Louisville back in the ball game. And now all of a sudden, this game feels like it's gonna be a lot longer. Well, we'll see how Duke can respond offensively. As Marissa Young chats things over in the dugout, 3-4-5 due up for the Blue Devils. Giselle Tapia gets it started, followed by Anna Gold and Kyrie Rodriguez. These longer games is where it's so important to keep the intensity and the energy high. Right now, it feels like the game should be close to over. It is only the bottom of the fourth. And this is where the team with more energy, more intensity, and more focus tends to be able to pull out the win. With such a close ball game like this, it is important for the Blue Devils to come back and answer to those three runs that Louisville just put on the board. Yeah, we're an hour 47 into this game, only in the bottom of the fourth. Yeah, it's, it's funny with softball, some games can last, you know, not too much more than an hour and a half, mm -hmm. and, and other games feel like you've played three games within one. It, it really just depends. Tapia lines it foul. So when you look back to your playing days, how were you able to generate some energy and excitement in situations like this? A lot of times it's about having fun in the dugout when you're not required to be locked in, focusing on whatever task you have at hand, whether it's being up to bat or being in the field. The job is to go into the dugout and stay light, cheer on your teammates, keep everyone loud. And a lot of times picking up those players like Jayla Wright, who might have had a little bit of a tougher night or a, a tougher inning. Grizzard misses now 2-2 on Giselle Tapia, who is 0 for 2. A lot of times when you see that a batter is fouling the ball right back, that is an indication that they have their timing down pat. So you love to see that Tapia is being able to make these adjustments within her at bat to be able to hopefully produce for her team. Tapia hitless today, but slotted in that three spot has produced this season for Duke. As she lines this off a hop, Alexander from third makes a stellar play at the hot corner for the first out. She said Anna Gold is not the only third baseman here who is able to make all-star plays. She's able to stop a hard hit ball by Tapia, pop up to her feet really quickly, set her feet, and make a great throw over to first base. Uh, th those third basemen, they are some special characters over there at the hot corner. It is a different breed of human <laughs> being, I swear. Anyone who's willing to go and play third base, I give them all the credit in the world. Here's Anna Gold, who sends the first pitch she sees deep to center field, and Gold continues to shine. 5-3 Duke. Anna Gold with her fifth home run in her last 10 or so at-bats. It's for every other at-bat seems to be a home run. Incredible job for Anna Gold. The sophomore continues to dominate Seventh home run of the season. She had 10 in all of last year. 
Yeah, she she's on fire. You could tell she saw that pitch instantly, and she knows she's not going to get that many great opportunities. So she sees something in the zone. She takes advantage of it. That is why she is the ACC Player of the Week. Fourth straight game with the home run. It is unbelievable what, what she's been able to do, and she did it on the first pitch that she saw from the lefty Grizzard. Yeah, you know, that means that in the dugout, she's paying attention. She's looking to see what she's, what Grizzard is throwing to her teammates, timing the ball up when she's on deck and being ready for the moment. We've, I, I said earlier, Anna Gold is a stud. She went out there and she took advantage of the opportunity. Kyrie Rodriguez looking to follow that act up. Rodriguez one for two today with a double. Now she lofts this out of play. Falls behind one and two. Golds, good response though for Duke. Hey, they give up the three runs. They come right back offensively. They get something to the scoreboard. Yeah, absolutely. But I think in order to really feel good, they're going to want to score a few more. Obviously, a home run for Anna Gold is going to be something that really pumps the team up. But we know a four-run lead, a two-run lead, is probably not going to be enough in this game, given that we're only at the bottom of the fourth. And we just saw Louisville respond with three runs in the top of this half of this inning. And it will be interesting to see how things continue to develop. But again, both coaching staffs are trying to hold their other aces that are gonna start other days off, I guess. Rodriguez gets under it, deep to left center, back to back for the Blue Devils. This is the second time that Rodriguez said, sure, pitch to Anna Gold, don't pitch to Anna Gold, I'm right behind her. Kyrie Rodriguez had a clutch homer in the sixth against Charlotte, and she goes long tonight against Louisville. Gosh, it's going to be really hard for people to not pitch to Anna Gold with Rodriguez behind her. Back-to-back -back home runs a little bit lower in the lineup is producing tonight for Duke softball. Third home run of the season for Kyrie Rodriguez. And it is 6-3 Duke, just like that. Quite the response by the Blue Devils at the plate. And uh, will Amina Vega make it three home runs in a row? That's the question here. Yeah, and you know, it can be really easy after back-to-back -back home runs to get into the box and start swinging for the fences, but she needs to stay within herself. They do need runners on, and they want to truly just pass the bat with only one out this inning. Vega, the freshman, has yet to hit a home run in her collegiate career. When we spoke to Coach Young earlier this week, she said that the team continues to surprise her with their resilience and their fight and their ability to be scrappy. And I think that that's what we're seeing right now. It's really easy to lose a 4-0 lead, making it 4-3, but to come back and say, so what? We're gonna score more too, is exactly what Coach Young talked to us about earlier this week. 3-0 from Grizzard after surrendering back-to-back -back long ball. So if you're Grizzard, what's going through your mind right now? How do you try to respond after giving up back-to-back -back home runs? The only thing you can do is focus on the now, right? I have one out, like you said earlier, asking with Jayla Wright, is there a little bit less pressure now that no one's on base, right? There's no one on base. Her job is to execute and paint those corners a little bit more, leaving a few pitches just a little too fat in the zone. And so she really wants to work on hitting those corners. Three, two, and a good answer from Grizzard as she records the strikeout, her second of the night. And Grizzard's only a freshman, so this is a huge learning opportunity for her. The ability to take those back-to-back -back home runs and then strike the next batter out is huge for her because it's all about battling back. Now Claire Davidson settles in one for two today. Slow roller, Lotus on the money to first, and that wraps up the fourth inning. Not one, but two home runs. Like a home run derby here tonight in Durham.
Top of the fifth inning, 15th ranked Duke looking to hold on against an upset-minded Louisville Cardinals squad on this Friday evening in Durham, North Carolina. The Blue Devils plus three and hits and at this last inning. Loving the long ball, back-to-back -back home runs. Take a look at how we got to this point. Back-to-back -back long balls in that fourth inning for Duke. Yeah, so far, the story has been fighting back. Duke got on the board early. Louisville was able to hit a three-run homer to get him back in the game. And then back-to-back -back home runs by Gold and Rodriguez put them back up. So we'll have to see how Louisville answers this inning. I'm not saying that they need to go and hit more home runs, although it does feel like we're starting to get to that point. The job right now is to then bring the score back into maybe like a 6-4, 6-5 game. Obviously, you want to take the lead at any shot that you can. But right now, they still are in the position with three innings left to just chip away. Hey, personally, I wouldn't mind if we see three home runs in inning for the next three innings of this game. D that's going to be a really long game, John. <laughs> <laughs> Ali Alexander leads off for Louisville in this top of the fifth inning. As you mentioned, the Cardinals responded in a big way in the top of the fourth with three runs, including a two-run home run by Hannah File. Alexander 0 for 1 today with a strikeout and a walk. Lily Walker back on the mound. She came off just a little bit spotty in that first inning, but again, only had to get one out. Now she's back at zero and has to be able to build up to three outs and excited to see how she performs again. She hasn't had that many innings yet under her belt, but she's been able to come in clutch for Duke thus far this season. That finds the zone for Walker. It's 7 8 9 2 up for Louisville. And this is that time right in the middle of the game where it's really easy to lose that focus for a little bit. When we were talking to Coach Young earlier in the week, she did say that a lot of times the defense has struggled in some of those middle innings, but a great strikeout to start the inning off for Walker, keeping that focus and getting an out on the board. Big strikeout for Walker. Take a look at this spin and movement on that nasty curve. Yeah, that's an incredible pitch for two strikes because it's off the plate. It's truly not hittable, but it comes out of her hand looking good. And so as a batter, you feel the need to at least foul it off, and then it slowly dives out of the strike zone. Second time that Alexander has gone down on strikes as Pickle Winkler digs in for the second time today. She walked in her lone plate appearance. Young player from Kentucky who started playing varsity softball in the seventh grade. You know, the interesting thing about both of these teams right now is they each have a pitching staff. So there is a chance that these hitters, who the hitters, the pitchers that they see tonight, they might not see again. Right. So it's going to be a game, a weekend of adjustments because both teams have such deep pitching staffs. Oh, two from Walker, and especially true given the fact that there is no game on Sunday. That game was moved to tomorrow, so even less rest for anybody who pitched tonight to potentially go in the third game. Yeah, absolutely, and, and I think that's why both coaches are trying to reserve their pitching staffs because tomorrow will be a long day for both teams. One, two, Winkler is fanned. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Lillian Walker. Great job by Walker, capitalizing with two strikes, throwing pitches that are just not hittable. But again, it looks really good throwing back-to-back -back strikes in the same location. But when it comes out of her hand, it still looks good enough that you feel like you need to swing. And then it dives off into the bottom corner of the strike zone. So back-to-back -back strikeouts, pretty much the same pitch, same result. Again, working that down and outer corner against Paige Garrity, who was k up in her last at-bat. So if you're Louisville, she's thrown the same exact pitch for back-to-back -back strikeouts. If you're a Louisville, Louisville batter, you need to go back into the dugout and start telling your teammates what you're seeing. That way they can learn and lay off that pitch. Because, of course, Lily Walker's going to probably keep throwing the same thing until someone learns. All right, here we go. 0-2 oh, count, two outs. Curve right. ball down and away. Yeah, might be. Walker, Kate up Alexander. Then Winkler, 
And now is ahead 0-2 on Paige Garrity, the nine hitter in this Louisville lineup. Similar pitch, but as you can tell there, the difference was it started really low. It came out of her hand and it never really looked like a strike. And that's what Lily Walker's doing really well with two strikes right now is, is pitching those balls that come out of her hand looking like a strike and then diving off into the dirt. One, two, slow roller. Baker in time, and that wraps up the bottom of the fourth. Top, pardon me, top of the fifth. Quite the inning for Lillian Walker. A couple of strikeouts, Duke up three. Marissa Young looks on her Duke squad. 15th in the nation, up by three after a stellar inning in the circle for Lily Walker. Pitching change now for the Cardinals of Louisville. It is Gabby Holloway returning to her home state. Native of Huntersville, North Carolina, just a bit outside of Charlotte, NC. And the righty uh, enters a 2.23 ERA, 0-1 record on the season. Just, again, looking to keep these Duke bats at bay. Duke offense that has started to find success this, as this game has progressed. Yeah, earlier, I think last inning, I said that maybe the coaches are trying to keep the pitchers that are in right now because they do not want to expose who they're going to be pitching the rest of the weekend. But clearly, that's not the case. And Coach April is really just trying to still have a chance to win this ball game. And she knows in order to do that, she has to shut down the Duke bats. Jada Baker leads things off for Duke. 8-9-1 due up in the bottom of this fifth. Last inning, Duke had back-to-back -back home runs courtesy of Anna Golds and Kyrie Rodriguez. Part of Baker's responsibility here is to be that leadoff batter all over again. See pitches that allows the rest of her team to see what she throws and be able to make those adjustments to, in order to prolong this inning. Baker 0 for 1 today. She was replaced by Sarah Goddard last time through as she rolls it. And Hess charges, sidearm, not in time. Baker beats out the toss. Incredible throw. I mean, that ball was incredibly slow. She charged it perfectly. It Ball is on the money. And great job for Baker for running that ball out and making sure that she was able to get there safe. I think that's the third ball we've seen that's been a, somewhat of a miss hit, but it's difficult when a lot of these hitters have so much power. The defense, it, it makes them a little bit in a sticky situation where to play. Do I play back and expect the power? You can't exactly play for the fluke. Right. Francesca Freelich shows Bunton. Hey, how about the call by a first base sump? Aaron Golden nailed that. Yeah, that was a bang-bang play. Really close play there, but de definitely looks like she just barely beat out the throw. Freelich like one for two. And a single back in the second. As she rolls it in, that 5-6 hole. Back-to-back -back singles for the Blue Devils. Another inning that Duke starts off with a base runner. Freelich doing a really great job of getting on base tonight. The outfield is a really competitive place for Duke softball. There's probably five or six girls that could start on any given day in the outfield for Duke. And the way to secure your spot as an outfielder obviously is to be able to catch fly, ball, fly balls and throw on target. But more than anything, it's a bat that you can't take out of the lineup. And Freelich now being two for three is doing just that. When Coach Young and staff go to write the lineup tomorrow, it's going to be hard to say no to Freelich. Deja Davis steps in. And hey, I guess that's a good problem to have if you're a coach. Too many options in the outfield. Yeah, and it's something that a good problem that Duke's had for years now. It feels like there's multiple people at multiple positions who could step up and play and start and perform on any given day. And I think that's what's made Duke so good and have so much success so far, so early in their lifetime as a program is because of how deep their bench is. And that of course speaks volumes to the job that Coach Young has done in terms of bringing in talent. Back-to-back -to -back top 10 recruiting classes for her as Davis grounds it foul. Part of me, pinch hitter, it's Cameron Jackson stepping in for Deja Davis. And Cameron Jackson is one of those players that I'm talking about. She's a phenomenal hitter, great in the outfield. And when she's not given those opportunities, these pinch hits mean even more to try to get her bat back into that lineup and back into the outfield. 
One, two, Jackson lines it to file. A nice snag at first for the first down. And although she's out there, that is a win as far as the pinch hit goes because she hit the ball solidly. She did what she was supposed to do. Had that gone through, that's a ball down the right field line. Runners are scoring, but great snag by the first baseman there to keep these runners at first and second. And as you said, Jackson, one of those people in the mix of that outfield rotation. She was an all-conference outfielder last year, three-year starter, and has now predominantly been coming on as a pinch hitter as a freshman outfielder steps in, and Jennings, who is one for two today with a double. And that's when the mentality is so important because your job that day might be different than what your job is tomorrow or the day before. And so you just have to be able to focus on the job at hand and not where you are in the lineup or not how often you're in and out, but it's much easier said than done. Jennings unable to bring that bat back, quickly falls behind 0-2 against Holloway. Slow roller, that is a fair ball into the corner. One run across in Baker. Freelick on her way home. A two RBI triple for the freshman, Deanna Jennings. Great job by Jennings. Looked pretty similar to the last hit we saw. Only difference is it was on the ground instead of in the air. Great job to be able to score two more runs. And she is so speedy. We'll take another look at this ball. Just barely staying fair. Ooh, that's a tough, tough ball on whether it was fair or foul. They're going to review this. Coach April asking for this to be reviewed, and you're right. That was so close. If it is a triple, it is the second triple of the season for Jennings. But they will take a look at this. Our umpiring crew of Robert Guest, Aaron Golden, and Jim Cooper. I think there's mixed feelings on the being able to review plays. I personally love it. Because yes. if that ball was actually foul, then I think that we should be able to have the chance to, to redo the play and, and to not, I mean, for right now, this is a huge call because if the ball stays fair after the umpires review it, coming back by five runs is gonna be really tough this late in the game. Right. However, take two off the board, it's a pretty different ball game. So this call, being able to review this, something like this, and as you can see right on the screen here, what the umpires are seeing, let's see if there's anything that looks like they can be able to overturn this ball. Remember, they need indisputable video evidence to overturn the call in the field, which was that this is, in fact, a fair ball. And it's hard to tell if the glove barely hits it, but I don't know. To me, it looks like this is a foul ball. Depends on where the ball is as it passes the bag. Remember, on the line is a fair ball. This will be, I think, the best look that we have. Oh, wow. Mm. That is so close. I am glad I'm not the <laughs> I am with you, Jill. It's, it looks like it's going foul, and then it kind of stays. And you kind I, I don't know how slow they can make the slow-mo go over there, but you'd have to dial that down a few, a few more for me to be able to figure that one out. I do agree with you that this is, I think, one of the great rule changes in softball. We're seeing it in baseball that you can go back and change the call because you're right. This is a complete game changer, this call right here. Yeah, absolutely. As it stands, it is a two RBI triple by Deanna Jennings, who you just saw in third. As we await the answer from Robert Guest, and it will in fact stand. It is a fair ball, a two RBI triple for Deanna Jennings. And she has opened this game up by five. I think that is the closest fair foul call I might have ever seen.
there was not enough for the umpires to overturn, which is the key to this rule here. They have to see something that is indisputable in over in order to overturn a call like that. And to me, if that had been called foul on the field, I don't think there would have been enough to overturn it as fair. It was that close. Yeah, absolutely. So Duke leads it by five. Here on the bottom of the fifth and just one out. Giselle Tapia settles in at the dish after that long hiatus for the review. And this is now where Duke can really do that damage. Three to eight after a really tough call like that is tough to come back from. But if they can bring in one, two more runs and make it a 3-10 ball game, that's when it's going to be really difficult for Louisville to come back. Hey, if they score three runs right here, they win. Right, because of the because of the eight run rule after five. Tapia 0 for 3 today. A couple of ground outs and a fly out to left. And one thing about this game is one hit can really change the dynamic of a game. We've seen how many batters have been left on base in this game for both teams and a, an ability to hit a triple like that when there's already this really tough dynamic of winning by three but it doesn't necessarily feel like that that was a huge hit and you want to try to pinpoint a difference in this game i mean to me it's duke being four of 11 with runners in scoring position Louisville 0 for 5 in the same situation. Yeah, again, this game has felt really similar on both sides. We've seen a lot of the same types of plays, a lot of the same types of hits, back-to-back -back home runs versus a three-run home run. But that is the difference, is Duke has been able to capitalize more than Louisville has. And again, this is what Coach April was talking about. We have to be able to capitalize in runners in scoring position situations. And hey, we are only in the bottom of the fifth. There is time for Louisville to do this, but it is definitely difficult, especially when Duke has such a deep pitching staff. Tapia laces it into right field. Another run will come across. First hit of the day for Giselle Tapia, and Duke leads it by six. And this is when it becomes really difficult for Louisville because they're on their third pitcher. And Duke is still being able to figure them out pretty quickly. And look who's up, Anna Gold, with a chance to end this game. If she could clear the fence, which she's done once already, and has done it in now four consecutive games. It's funny, a few innings ago, I didn't feel like we'd be even close to potentially talking about a run rule situation, but now we have someone up to bat that has hit as many home runs as she has hit recently, and someone on first base. I mean, this is a little unexpected from the way the game has been going so far. Couple low pitches, gonna keep it away from yeah. anything she could hit. And I love that Anna is being selective. Again, this is gonna be so tough for her moving forward in the season, how well she's being scouted. She knows this game is close to being over. It's so fun to be the hero like she was last weekend, but her job is just to pass the bat. Gold watches ball two. He talked to Coach Young about Anna and she just speaks glowingly about the growth of her at the plate. She said that they saw glimpses of this last year, but that was really embraced what it takes to be a complete hitter. And she awaits the 2-1 and grounds it to Alexander, who gets the lead runner for the second out. Great job by Tapia sliding into second base, breaking up that potential double play there. Obviously, that's not what Anna Gold wants, but now, again, they have to be able to answer to Rodriguez like they've had to all night, and Rodriguez still has this opportunity to, yes, end the game, but more so pass the bat, keep the ball going, and, and seeing if they can score two runs and, and end this game. Especially with a double header coming up tomorrow, a long game is the last thing you want on a Friday night. It's going to be a really quick turnaround for both teams because 
if you don't play softball or you haven't played collegiately, the warm-up process is a pretty long process and you end up having to get to the field at least three hours before game time because you're normally warming up for close to two. If you have some sort of treatment plan, you're coming in before that. Next thing you know, they're going to be here pretty close to after breakfast. <laughs> Very true. This game already two hours, 18 minutes long. Rodriguez, a hopper, and that rolls just foul. Normally, I'd say Rodriguez should be happy that that rolled foul, but she moved down the line so quickly, they did not have a chance had that ball stayed fair. Rodriguez finding a lot of success at the plate tonight. The double and a home run as you get a look at Gabby Holloway. And Marissa Young chatting with her young catcher. That was a pretty big hack by Rodriguez in that, in that last hit there. So I'm thinking that she's probably saying something on the lines of settle down a little bit, keep your head on the ball, and just try to put the ball in play. Rodriguez, an all-state player out of the talent-rich state of Florida, one of seven Floridians in this Duke roster, which by far and away leads out of any state in the country. California second with two. Any other state represented, just one. Yeah, and a lot of times, in, because this is a private school, there's no requirements for how many in-state kids there has to be. And 3-1, Rodriguez under it, has hit one already. This is a chance, and it is caught at the wall by Paige Garrity. Smiles in her face, and we head to the sixth inning. Duke puts up three more and leads it 9-3 here in Durham. We have seen three home runs in this game. Jill, all of them came in the fourth inning. Yeah, Hannah File coming back in order to bring on some runs for the Louisville team. And then Anna Gold absolutely launching one. Rodriguez said, hold on, wait. I want some of that too. Hit back-to-back -back home runs following Anna Gold's homer. Blue Devils in business up nine to three. And Lily Walker, remember, this was just about a half hour ago or so, a 4-3 ball game, and now she's able to pitch with a six-run cushion. Yeah, I'd love to see Lily Walker get out there and throw just really loose, but honestly, she did that last inning. We saw two strikeouts swinging. She had an incredible two-strike pitch that just kind of fell out of the strike zone into the dirt, making it not hittable. I would say that Lily Walker is really starting to find her stride, and she's doing an incredible job for the entire bullpen because because of her ability to stay in this game tonight and most likely take Duke through the end of the game, she's saving the arms of two of the top pitchers for Duke in order for them to be able to come in and pitch to the doubleheader tomorrow. Neither Cassidy Curd nor Claire Davidson has touched the mound tonight, which is a good thing. Right. It's great for Duke to be able to save some of their aces in order to be able to come out fresh tomorrow. And, and that way Louisville has not seen what they look like. There's a good chance that Duke's going to see pitchers tomorrow that they hit off tonight. Corpy Otis leads things off in this inning. Top of the order for Louisville as they try to claw their way back into this game. Led by a coach and Coach April, who you said uh, leads teams that just never quit, never give up. Yeah, we asked her earlier, like, what's her message to her team so far this year? And she said that the message is not necessarily winning, but it's taking the actions that lead to winning. No one goes out there and says, okay, I'm going to win. It's okay, I'm going to have quality at-bats. I'm going to play spotless defense. And so that's what she's been really pressing her team about. So right now, it's not about trying to win the ball game. It's about doing the things that can get them there. And right now, that's passing the bat. Just focus on getting yourself on base so the next person can come on behind you. And that potential comeback would start right here. Corby Otis, top batting average in this team, entered today at 429. And is one of three on the evening. Hard chopper, and she will beat it out, no throw, and infield's hit for Corby Otis, her second hit of the game. That's about as hard as you can hit a ball on the ground. You could tell by the time that the ball reached the, literally the outfield, there was absolutely no shot. On two bounces, reached the outfield. As Otis stands over at first, what a young player she is. Only a sophomore, an all-freshman selection last year, and has continued to keep things going at a high level. Brings up Sarah Gordon, 
who is three for three with three singles. First pitch, she sees a diving stop by Gold, and the throw is under the glove of Vega. Oh, that would have been highlight reel stuff. A great, great stop by Gold. I do wonder if maybe she should have gone first. However, she moves second. It's really difficult because the outfield was playing so deep. That ball just kind of trickled by because it did hit the glove yeah, of Vega, which allowed the runner to get to third. At the very least, that probably prevented two bases, right? Yeah, absolutely. Anna Golds. I mean, she makes these sports center top 10 worthy plays routinely. Made one earlier with the unassisted double play. Like I said, it takes a, a special type of human being to be able to play <laughs> at third base. There have been some really hard hit balls from both teams, and the third basemen of both teams have been able to make great plays. And a file. Had a good chunk of softball on that pitch. There is Claire Davidson warming up in the Duke bullpen. File. You see her line today hit by a pinch, and then that two-run home run, which was crushed to opposite field. That made it a 4-3 game. Duke has scored five unanswered since. Fouled away for strike two. If you're Lily Walker, you have to be really careful right now. File has hit one out today. We know she has that power. And with two runners on, the last thing you want to do is make this a 6-9 ball game. O2 for Walker. She cannot throw anything near the zone. Great job by, Rod by Rodriguez to be able to stop that. And I actually think that might be free lick behind the plate now. Yeah, that is free lick who was swapped back behind the dish. One, two. Sky to foul play. And the catch is made out and left. Throw home is cut off, and Otis enters to score. Great throw online. I think Anna Gold was stopping that throw from going all the way home in order to prevent the runner on first from going to second. But it looked like it could have been a pretty close play. Throw in from Cameron Jackson out at left, so Louisville Gets another run across. Still just one out for Taylor Roby, the Cardinals' all-time home run leader, and she has 45 in her career. They would love to see 46 right here. The way that both teams have been hitting, it almost feels like no amount of runs is, is too many runs. But again, a really long ball game for two teams that have a doubleheader tomorrow. One of the best two-way players in the nation. Hit list today. That's not to hit in six of her last seven games. <laughs> 45 career home runs for Taylor Roby. And as you see, she is atop the leaderboard. She did it this season, February 25th, surpassing Courtney Moore's record that stood for 16 years. Yeah, with 45 home runs, you're going to be on that later board for quite a long time. Yep. And she gets the extra year as well, and grad student now. So the COVID year, plus she had a redshirt year as well. So a seasoned veteran at the plate. She has made the most of her tenure with the Cardinals. Hasn't seen anything close to the zone of this at bat. And I thought she had ball four. Great pitch by Lily Walker, staying in that at bat, not throwing Roby the pitches that she necessarily wants to hit, but being able to stay in and, and for her sake, hopefully, being able to throw another strike and get back into a 3 2 count. Roby fouls it away. Number eight, who wears number eight, in honor of her dad, Eric, who wore number eight as a basketball and soccer player, and she comes from a very athletic family. Her sister was a five-time All-American at Bellarmine in track and field. 
One thing we haven't seen today is a pitcher-catcher conference. Happy to see that Freelix going out there. It's a 3-2 count, one of the best hitters for Louisville out there. I think it's a fantastic time to go and tell Lily Walker whether it's a little adjustment or maybe it's just a little bit of encouragement. Freelick knows what Lily Walker needs. Full count from Walker. And she strikes out Roby, the throwdown is not in time. So a swipe bag for the Cardinals, but Roby retired. A pretty great throw from Freelick. There is a lot going on there. There's the swing for strike three and still being able to get a pretty accurate throw down there a little late, but the first job is to catch the ball and secure it, secure the strikeout before going for the runner. So Gordon on second now, and you set a tough play. I'm sure you've been in situations like that as a former catcher yourself. Oh, yeah, there's a lot going on in your line of sight when you have a batter swinging, a ball moving, a, a runner running. I mean, you're trying to focus on so many things. I, I give props to Freelick for that attempt. Daisy Hess now settles in, looking to keep this inning alive. She has blocked twice. Louisville still 0 for 5 with runners in scoring position. Another opportunity right here. Lily Walker doing such a great job executing her changeup today. Lily versus Daisy, battle of the flowers right here. <laughs> Another thing I really like about Lily Walker is her ability to continue to throw her pitches even when there's been really long balls hit. Hess deep to left center, and Louisville right back in this. A two-run blast with two down, and they get that hit with runners in scoring position in grand fashion. Right as I'm giving her credit for being able to own her pitches, looks like she kept one just a little too fat over the plate, and Louisville is bringing that ball game back to a three-run deficit. You can see here, I mean, that ball is up in the zone, and that's tough because not only is it the middle of the, uh, not only is it in the middle of the plate, but it's right at the ability to launch. Jennings gave her best go, but just ran out of real estate. Daisy has winning the battle of the flowers. Yes, exactly. And now it's Easton Lotus. Lotus is another type of flower, yeah. right? There just you go. Keep it going. Why not? Right. And he's the bunt down foul. We're just missing a rose. No rose in this game, I don't think. We haven't seen one yet, at least. <laughs> well, you said it before, Jill. This feels like the game that isn't, no run is, is big enough, no lead is big enough, right? And that's true right here, Louisville, another home run. Yeah, and you know, I really love what Lotus is doing, dropping a bunt after a home run, kind of trying to catch this defense off balance. Great job by Freelich for letting it go foul. It's really easy to get caught off guard and try to make a play really quickly, but she saw and was able to recognize the spin, let the ball go foul, and let the defense collect themselves. Lotus hitless today, although she did walk back in the third. Kept that bat around now behind one and two. And she'll step out, calling time. Another one of those situations when they have two outs, but it doesn't necessarily feel like that. Louisville has really made the Duke team work for their outs today. A lot of very hard hit balls. Yeah, I, I can't remember the last time we had a one, two, three ending. And we've only seen one this game. That's it. And Walker takes him off of that pitch, spins it down and away, and K's up Easton Lotus. But it was the long ball for Louisville. Launching the ball to left center field, capitalizing for Louisville and bringing back the deficit. As you see, it is a windy 
Friday night in Durham, North Carolina. Temperatures have dropped. The bats, they've been hot, though. Home runs galore and a high-scoring affair in Louisville's ACC season opener. I don't even really know what to expect. It's pretty late in the game. You turn on this ball game and you just think, oh, 15 ranked Duke has a three run lead. This game is probably over, but if you watch any part of this game tonight, you know that that is probably not the case. So it'll be interesting to see if Duke is able to come back and attack. Now, they don't get the opportunity at the bottom of the seventh if they're able to hold Louisville off at the top. But again, there aren't there are not too many runs in this game because of what we've seen in the battles back and forth. So if you're Duke right now, you definitely want to put another one, two, hey, three on the board just for insurance. Pitching change for Louisville, it is Sam Boo who heads on her sixth appearance of the season. And she sports a very impressive 124 ERA, the sophomore from Indiana. Coach April has said, I don't care how many pitchers I have to throw. I'm taking a shot at winning this game. And in order to do so, she has to make sure that there are no runs scored this inning from Duke. They have one more opportunity to come back, tie, win the ball game in the seventh. And in order to do so, she's bringing in as many pitchers as she needs. The ready from New Palestine, Indiana. You can look at this Louisville staff, and it's something that Coach April talked to us about. The fact that last year they had to ride Roby as much as they did. She didn't want to have to throw her out there as often as they did, but now she feels there is more depth in this staff as the 2-2 is hit well but foul and settles for a very long foul ball. There used to be these dominant pitchers like, for instance, a Jenny Fitch or a Kat Osterman who's able to go out and throw inning and after inning after inning. But the thing is, is with one, the technology today, being able to review games, being able to cut clips, everyone can see every pitch in the, in the country. There is no hiding. And so it's really important now more than ever to be able to have a pitching staff. Phenomenal play at first by Hannah File to retire Amina Vega for the first down of this sixth. Another hard hit ball that the defense just makes a great play on tonight. First baseman saying, hey, I want some of that shine over from, from third base. Duke leads it by three here in the bottom of this sixth inning. And a pinch hitter for the Blue Devils as Kelsey Zappa steps in. Two of 10 this year. This is her 17th appearance of the season. Has predominantly served as a pinch runner in her Blue Devil tenure. Yeah, later in the game for some batters who maybe haven't been able to have their best outing, this is the time that you're gonna start seeing pinch hitters come in, get the opportunity to be able to put more runs on the board and also show, show coach, hey, this is what I've got. Boo quickly ahead. One and two. Boo, somebody who really came on strong in the second half of last season. Coach April felt she did a really nice job in that role and has kept that role. And this here, as this splits the gap off the barrel of Zampa, making her way towards second. And she's able to keep her hand in the bag for a double. Great job by Zampa being able to make a name for herself, taking advantage of that pinch bat opportunity. You can see she strikes the ball hard. It's like one of those balls that's not necessarily a line, line drive, but is just smoked. And she immediately decides to go to a great throw by the outfield. You can see there she got pretty lucky, I'd say, because that was a really close call. Fourth double of the game for Duke. Another extra base knock. It is the first two-bagger of the season for Zampa. She settles into scoring position. And Jada Baker fouls it away. Zampa was pinch hitting for Claire Davidson, who, remember, we did see her in the bullpen, still uh, an arm throw into the Duke bullpen, but it is Walker who's actually just keeping that arm loose. Baker one for two today. With a game like this, if you're warming up in between or during the innings to be ready to go on, you could end up throwing a full bullpen. <laughs> this game has been so long. Let's go, 
Baker loops it foul. You can see Cassidy Curd there now warming up. Earlier, Claire Davidson. It'll be interesting to see if Coach Young decides to expose one of her starters for tomorrow in order to just close out the game, or if she's going to give Lily Walker maybe the opportunity with a shorter leash. We'll see what Coach Young's decision is after this inning. One, two, slow roller. This could be trouble. Hess in time to first. That's the second out of the inning. Just trying to put something in play, dink it over. She was able to, to use like a t more of a two strike swing, a timing swing. We've seen this from Baker quite a bit actually recently and it's not necessarily always used just for two strikes, but sometimes if you're having trouble getting some timing down on the pitcher, you show your bat out in front and then as the pitcher goes back, so do you and it allows you to stay a little bit more free and time up the pitcher better. First pitch, Francesca Freelix sees is skied foul and hauled in by Hannah File. Louisville needs three or more to keep things rolling. We head to the top of the last. Do the Cardinals have a comeback in store? Find out next. Last chance for Louisville to mount a rally against 15th ranked Duke. The Blue Devils lead it by three. The Cardinals need three or more to keep this game alive as the Duke outfields Brings its huddle. It is 7 8 9 due up for the Cardinals. They get it started with Ali Alexander. First of three games this weekend. It'll be a doubleheader tomorrow in Louisville's ACC opening series. But it starts here with Ali Alexander, who is 0 for 2 with a couple of strikeouts and a walk. If you're Duke, you cannot count Louisville out quite yet. I know they have a three run lead, but this game has been unpredictable at. at the least, right? You, every single time that it looks like Duke's pulling away, Louisville comes back. They seem to have really great energy. They've been putting the bat on the ball, hitting really hard shots, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if, if we don't see quite an ending here. And Walker quickly ahead 0-2 with a couple of breaking pitches. I like the call from Coach Young to keep Walker in, give her the opportunity to close out this game saving Curd and Davidson for tomorrow, not allowing Louisville to get a sneak peek tonight. And she probably has a little bit of a shorter leash. leash. We saw Curd warming up, so she's probably ready to go in there if need be. But if you're Lily Walker, you're saying, no, I got this. Walker has the strikeout. Take a look back at this last pitch. Same location we've been seeing all night from her strikeout. She starts the ball. It drops out of the zone. It's not a hittable pitch, but when she starts it off, it looks just good enough for the batter to swing. One down for Pickle Winkler, the eight hitter. Bottom third of this Louisville lineup. So seven, eight, nine, the three that we're slated to see here are the seventh hit list today. Love to see the energy behind the plate from Freelick. Nodding on to Lily Walker, congratulating her for a great pitch, missed pitch. Dribbler from Winkler, trickles through the infields, and there is life for Louisville. That's Louisville's job right now. Pass your bat, pass your bat to the next person. Winkler aboard, brings up the nine hitter, Paige Garrity slated to hit in this spot. The runner on first base for Lily Walker doesn't matter. What she needs to focus on is the batter up to bat right now. They're up by three. She has one out. Her sole focus is the batter. Garrity hitless today. Checks her swing. Chance to turn to Baker. Vega, not in time. They get the out at seconds. One last chance for Louisville here in the seventh. Again, with the way this game has gone, two outs, it just doesn't feel over yet, especially with Otis up to bat. Yes, top of the order, Corby Otis, the most efficient bat in this Louisville lineup. She has two hits tonight, two of four. 
First pitch she sees. Scooped up, no trouble for Baker. And Duke opens up the weekend series against Louisville with a 9-6 win. A fun one, a lot of fireworks, but in the end, Duke picks up its 16th win in its last 17 games. This game has been a battle. I think we're in for two pretty long games tomorrow. Both teams hit well, they, their bats came alive, and they both needed multiple pitchers to get this game to the finish line. It'll be very interesting to see how both teams come out tomorrow. Duke, five of 14 with runners in scoring position as the Blue Devils pick up the win and move to three and one in ACC play. Big thanks to all of you for joining us. For my broadcast partner, Jillian Ferraro, our phenomenal crew here at Duke, my name is John Gross. And so long from Durham, North Carolina, the 15th-ranked Blue Devils in the win column, 9-6 over Louisville.